Well, hello my fine gardening friends, how the devil are you? Welcome to a beautiful morning here in equally beautiful Nova Scotia. It is something like June the 9th, I think, something like that. It's the second week in June anyway. And um, as you can see, beautiful blue skies uh, around me. We have had um, a few days of sort of drizzly weather, drizzly rain, cloudy, um, cool weather. But really, the last couple of months have been mostly very, very dry. A bit too dry for my liking um, and to the vegetables liking uh, in, in, in the different beds. Um, things, some things have done well, some things haven't done well. But I thought um, about time I, I took you around a bit of a tour this year to see what I've got growing. Um, lots of different things growing and I've got a new, a sort of new, nearly um, finished new veg area as well, which um, I can show you round. So why don't we get on with a bit of a June veg tour? So this is my old, older veg area. It's got, what we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, six by four raised beds and a couple of something like 10 by two raised beds at the end there. And I've got um, three triangles and one one I keep forgetting to do, and I'm gonna do it this year. I'm gonna build a new triangle there. But there's my sort of uh, the main area. And in this first bed, I have carrots. Now, as you can see, they're a bit spotty. And this is, um, again, the thing about the dry, spring we've had carrots like it a bit moist you know just to, to, to get themselves going and you know i've got some good growth but uh, a bit spotty in places so i've reseeded these and hopefully in the next couple of weeks they will um get going which isn't a, um, a big deal because it's good not to have all your your carrots at one time but these are looking good nice and healthy I'll just have to keep an eye on and make sure they are wet. And I've, I've sown, I think, uh, another set there as well. So uh, we'll have some staggered carrots throughout the summer. Here is the garlic. So I've got music and red Russian. Let's get out of the shadow. Go around the other way. Uh, and red Russian. And I just can see already that we have some garlic scapes coming through already. Now those of you who don't know hard neck garlic, you get sort of two crops really. So you get these garlic scapes coming through um, about six weeks, month to six weeks before the garlic's actually ready to, to grow, uh, to harvest. And you can, once they sort of curl around, you can cut them off and chop them up as, uh, you know, as, as sort of garlic flavored type, um, uh, addition to your you know green addition to your, to your dishes or you can uh, really sort of chop them up fine and make a pesto out of them etc so there's lots of different things you can do with scapes so that's really good um, a really good extra addition and these grow nicely look at the difference in the size between the music and the red russian they have a more concentrated flavor these are normally you know, nice big bulbs, but they're all growing nicely and I'm looking forward to to uh, harvesting them in six weeks or so and then drying them out, etc. But I have still literally got, and it's a bit soft now, <laughs> garlic from last year's harvest that I'm, I'm using. I chopped it up last night in a rather delicious curry that I made. So what we've got here, this is, um, this is a, uh, a cut flower bed. It's a bit messy at the moment, but I've got some coriander that I thought I'd let grow in there. But um, I've got some gladioli coming and then I'm going to, I've got some, what have I got? Some other stuff. Some flowers that I'm growing in the greenhouse at the moment that I'll be planting out here. That'll be used for cut flowers later. So nothing much in there at the moment. Here is my potato bed this year. And as you can see, I'm growing them in seaweed. And they're growing through nicely now. I need to get some more seaweed today actually because I like to keep it you know, topped up as they grow, you know, getting more seaweed around it. Um, 
And like I've said before in previous videos, um, I like to grow them in seaweed. They come out cleaner, um, ready sorted. That's a joke. Um, but yeah, growing really nicely there. Here is my strawberry bed. I've had a good clear out of this strawberry bed this year, so it's looking a bit more sparse. Um, but that's okay. I still should get a good crop of strawberries in there this year, if not as many. And I've got a nice mulch, as you can see, of leaf mould on top there, so it keeps them nice and tidy. So looking good there. Now check this out at the moment. These are my blackberries. Look at all the flowers that are about to come there. And if they all come true, that would be a bumper harvest. Look at that. Beautiful. So obviously, um, <clears throat> blackberries grow on the previous year's harvest. So these uh, year's growth. So this is all last year's growth. And I need to look for some new stuff, actually, to make sure that that is tied in and growing nicely. But look at that. Lots and lots and lots of flowers there. So hopefully lots of blackberries to come in the later summer oh excuse me there we go that's good here is my asparagus i had lots and lots of asparagus this asparagus bed's about five years old now um really producing lots of asparagus for me as you can see by the cuts etc now i'm letting most of it now grow out i might take one more cutting actually today there's some spears come up that I might get them, but now I'm letting them grow out so they can get nice and strong and ready, you know, the roots all ready for next year's growth. But uh, a really good crop of them early on, you know, and it's fantastic getting that early crop, you know, the first sort of crop you get in the springtime coming up. And still loads coming up here, so we've got one, two, three, four, five six seven still a good seven or eight coming up there already so that's excellent very good here is my autumn fruiting raspberries so they grow on this year's growth so i cut them down hard in this sort of um autumn time and they grow up and then come sort of september october that last bit of juicy fruit when everything else is part of the garden is sort of winding down, really good to have them as a last treat before the winter comes. And they normally get lots of them out of there. And here we have onions. So onions growing nicely here, and they'll be ready sort of um, July, August, late July, August time for me. Can't remember, I've got some red onions and some um, white onions in there. So here again, a bit of spotty growth here. Um, so I've got some spinach that I planted up and some bok choy, but I've got loads of bok choy. This was all left over bok choy. But look, here is, that's a grass, but spinach, very spotty in its germination. So I've planted, and, and I had actually um, different types of lettuce in here and they didn't germinate at all. And again, it's because of this and a uh, dry spring and not watering. This is a carrot that was, this was a carrot bed last year and I've left that in there. See if I can get some carrot seeds this summer instead of having to buy them. And the same with an onion that sort of popped up in the back there as well. So um, we'll see what we get out of them. Always good to experiment. But um, I think I've planted or sown some more uh, spinach in here. And hopefully that will germinate, but uh, definitely not good on uh, germination outside this sort of uh, springtime for me. When I um, indirectly um, sow them, I get some. De I think these are actually indirect. So these were these were from um, growing in the greenhouse. These ones here. Right on to so that's this bit here, area here. Really, I've got some mints in here more coriander and some oregano in that one but that is this area some some good growth good growth and uh, you know already had a good crop out of there looking for a good crop of garlic soon 
looking good here, nice and healthy. Right, so behind me is my area that I'm sort of, uh, I did have some, you know, beds in there before, but I'm redesigning it now and putting new beds in, as you can see behind me. And uh, I think there's a video up there on, on how I sort of uh, went through that part of the, of the building the beds. I've still got the archways to do, which I'm probably not going to do this year. I'm actually probably just going to stick some big branches in like I do with my runner beans archway tunnel along there. I'm just going to put them there so I'm going to grow some tomatoes etc up that lot uh, just for this time. So I've got this area here. I've got to put new uh, concrete in for these posts to straighten them up because I have grapevines growing up there. So I'm just retidying all of this area up. I've um, got the greenhouse, the lower greenhouse behind and a couple of high raised beds, which I haven't got much in them at the moment, um, except for, I'll show you the runner beans and a couple of problems I've had um, with growing them this year so far. So let's get on with it, shall we? Right, still looking like a building site, excuse me. But, um, so here is my runner bean archway that I normally have. Normally, you know, later on in the summer, as you can see, it'll have lots and lots of runner beans and flowers and all sorts of hummingbirds around it. Fantastic. Um, now, I sowed some runner beans early on in the spring, directly there and at the end, and they have been annihilated by slugs, the blackguards. These are ones I just planted the other day um, and slugs have already been at them, as you can see, telltale goo, but I've still got some going. I'm going to put some more in again, more um, so direct sown ones, because uh, they'll soon sort of, I'll put a couple in this time, they'll, they'll hopefully get away. But uh, yeah, the slugs have been at them, but it looks sparse at the moment, but it will soon get up and at them. Right, on to my sort of redesigned new area. As you can see, I've got two long beds wrapped around and a middle bed. And the middle bed I'll have for flowers. So that'll get pollinators in and just look nice as well. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm changing from stones, which get right on my nerves, to um, shredded bark and uh, uh, branches, etc. Again, this is like just basically a free resource for me because of all the sort of trees around the garden I'm lucky enough to have. I'm oh, talking about lucky enough to have. Um, I'll be doing another video on the, on the flower garden, but as you can see, the flower garden's looking absolutely fantastic in this early springtime. But yeah, all the branches, trees, etc., allow me to shred this all up and, you know, a free resource. And this is easy to manage for um, weeds, etc. So, you know, we get weeds come up here and it's all difficult to get in and dig out and stuff. They come out a lot easier when you've got a couple of inches of this nice bedding down. So this is what I'm just gradually doing over the next couple of weeks. Just going all the way around and replacing it as I shred more and more. Right, so what we got in here? So in the centre bed, we've got, um, do you know, what's annoying when you get old is you start to forget things. And I can't for the life of me think what that is at this moment in time. It'll obviously be coming across on the screen now because I'll remember it afterwards, but sorry. But that'll have lots and lots and lots of flowers when it grows up. I've got some other sorts of um, Crocosmia or something like that coming up, uh, bulbs of some sort. There's some sweet peas, one, two, three. And I'm gonna put um, some wires and um, some posts up in here so they can grow up. Got some gladioli, glo gla <laughs> easy for me to say, some gladioli in there. And I've just planted some dahlias as well. So they'll be coming up and hopefully have them for cut flowers as well. So that should have lots of different cut flowers and I'll put some other stuff in there as I as I go along. Now 
I'm going to have tomatoes growing here. So I've got one there at the moment. I've got some, lots of other ones in the greenhouse just sort of uh, growing at the moment. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there in the middle yet, but I'll, I'll think about that. Something tall, obviously. Got some beetroot here. So I've multi sown this beetroot. So they'll sort of a couple of them or three. I did have lots, but um, the mouse, the mice got at them. So that's been a bit uh, annoying. So I've got different beetroot there. I'll put some strawberries in the corners. Could be a bad decision because you know how they like to take over, but I'll keep on top of them. They should be all right. So strawberries there um, and strawberries there. These are all taken from that the culling of that the other area that I showed you with the strawberries. More beetroot again. So we've got a bit of symmetry there. Um, peas. Got my peas in a bit late. But they're just starting to take off now, so they'll sooner, sooner get themselves going. And as you can see there, I've got some spinach again now, starting to sort of germinate. Little spinach coming up. Peas, as I said. Bok choy along here. And bok choy on both sides along there. What else we got coming along here? Oh, I've got some purple... Sprouting broccoli, lots of that there. Some onions I put in. Um, some onions that side. I've actually sown along here in the, in the, in the edges some lettuce, etc. So hopefully that'll come up the same as that side. More purple sprouting broccoli. Like I said, bok choy. Oh, so when I was digging up this area, and I'm still doing that one there, um, I had another bed of asparagus. And I, you know, dug it up, dug it up, but didn't have the heart to uh, kill it all off. So probably a, a bad move, good move, I don't know. But I'll put some there. And they they say they don't do well in a in uh, beds with other other vegetables, etc. So, but I thought I'd have a look and see what how we get on. Oh, weed. Bok <clears throat> choy. Some more spinach. Some broccoli that's been add by the slugs i don't like using slug pellets so you know you gotta you gotta uh, be strong or get lost and there we go that is basically what i've got going here at the moment now it don't look a lot but that will soon grow up and produce lots of you know the bok choy lots of bok choy lots of um broccoli in there um beetroot the peas runner beans in this area here so lots going on and and the onions etc so there'll there'll be lots to eat in the summer to come right let's have a final little look at uh, let's have a look at the greenhouse right here we go final bit um you're pleased to know in the greenhouse the greenhouse that i built built what was it three years ago now um still still standing so uh happy with that had a few uh snags with that on the build um there's the <laughs> the video uh, on that up there at the moment but um things are going well in at the moment so let's have a little look to see what's going on like behind me in this sort of center bed can you see that let's have a look in the center bed there i've got tomatoes in there now some bok choy still i've got an obsession with bok choy this year for some reason um i just it seems to grow really easy so you know I've I sowed loads of seeds and then it's just like come up so I've got to plant it. I never got the heart to chuck them away, seedlings. So I end up planting them all over the place. But there we go. Um, so some tomatoes and as you can see from these strings, I will grow them up the, sh the string. And uh, as you can see, they grow really high in here. And last year didn't have a very good tomato year. Um, we'll see this year whether we do or not. But the tomatoes in there are healthy, but I'll show you some other ones. I've had a few problems this year with tomatoes, um, the seedlings. Not sure why, but um, maybe it was um, Mrs. F's watering while I was away for a week or so. But then again, it was my fault for being away for a week or so, wasn't it? So let's have a look at uh, the other bits and bobs and stop all the waffling. Right, so we've got peppers here. So I've had a few problems with peppers this year. My first seedlings all got eaten by 
mice. So then I had a war on the mice and had a go at them. Um, but since then, right, since then I've grown these seedlings, but I've also bought these jalapeno ones. These are habanero, I think. Um, so I've still got some, but you know how slow growing um, peppers, etc. What else have I got here? California Wonder, these are. Um, they grow slowly, so um, whether I'm going to get a good crop or not, I don't know. Let's have a quick look outside. These are Mad Hatter peppers that I grew and overwintered from last year. So they are going to have a good head start. I put them outside to get a nice bit of um, natural rain yesterday. But uh, they, they will have a good head start, so they'll produce loads this year. So back into the greenhouse. So they're like peppers. Um, I can't remember what these are. I've got a feeling these are melons, but I'm not sure. Right, this here is going to be, what's it going to be? Basil, I was late with a basil. So hopefully these are a little basil seedlings just about to come through. And, yep, and I will take these things off because it'll get hot in here on a hot day like this. Some flowers, dahlias. These are cucumbers. So I've got lots of cucumbers. So I'm gonna grow some in here. I've got one planted in there already. Um, some in here and some outdoors to see how we go. Some corn, sweet corn, late with the sweet corn. But it's growing nicely there. So um, that bed um, in the new area, that's half sort of um, completed. I'm changing that up to make a smaller bed that I can put a fence around. And that's what I want to grow sweet corn in from now on. But whether I'm going to have time this year to put the fence up, I don't know. Um, sweet peas. These are... I can't remember what these are. Um, they're either melons. No, they're not melons, because I've just realized. Oh, yeah, so I can't remember what these are. So they've got to be some sort of squash or some sort of other squashy type thing. <laughs> but there we go. Um, got some more here. What we got here? Courgettes. Black Beauty, got some of them planted outside um, and different bits and bobs, sunflower, what we got here? Cheese, a cheese pumpkin of some sort. These are some cuttings of some bush honeysuckle that I'm hopefully going uh, that I'm hopefully going to take, so that's good. Zinnias, late with the zinnias, more flowers, more chilies that um, I've had problems with and sunflowers and some some geranium cuttings of some sort but that's not veg there we go look the um this bok choy I've already had some bok choy last night with some with some uh, garlic and ginger sauteed absolutely beautiful hopefully these will start get going now uh but there we go oh tomatoes that's what I wanted to show you so these tomatoes are growing not too bad, but I've still had lots of snags with them. And then these ones here, definitely not growing very well at all. Um, so I've had a bit of a problem this year with my tomato seaweed. Never had a problem before. So I'm not sure what that is. But some of them are grown and some of them are starting to recover now. So that should be good. So there we go, there's a quick little look on um, what's going on in the veg garden in the Farley household, um, the optimistic garden this year. I will um, be doing a video on, on my flowers and, and all that sort of stuff um, next. But I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you are growing, what's, what you're interested in um, that you are growing this year and what have you had problems with this year? Any snags with what you've been growing? There we are. Jobs are good.